I want to make a 6S battery pack using these batteries for a future project, an electric longboard. So stay tuned for that, but today here we are for a new review. To make this battery pack I will use this Sunco 1790A spot soldering station. I will unbox the product, see what we have, give it a test and show you how it works and give my final opinion. Have in mind that this is my first time with this spot welder, so everything about this station was new for me too. It has a fixed spot welder and also extension electrodes, if you want to solder separate it from the machine. It also includes a soldering iron with a T12 tip. Anyway, before we start, make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell for future videos. Also, thanks to all my patrons for the support. So, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. I received the spot welder in a cardboard box. I take everything out. And we first have a quick manual to help us start. Then we have another small cardboard box. And finally there is the spot welder station. That's all that we have inside of the received box. Ok, so first let's see what we have inside of the smaller box. We have the foot pedal, so we could activate the welding process with our foot and still be able to use both hands. Then we have the extension spot soldering tool, which are basically two thick cables with two copper tips and also kind of springy. We also have a plastic made soldering iron that uses the T12 tip like this one, so that's pretty nice. Next we have a metal soldering iron stand and this small plastic bag, with an allen key, two spare fuses in case the one of the station has burned out and we also have some copper tips for the welder station. We also received this battery holder used to group the batteries and solder them together. It has a magnet in the middle so the batteries won't move till you finish soldering. Finally, we have some bags with some nickel plated sheets of different sizes and material so we could make more tests, try different options and learn how to use this station. As you can see there are different width and different resistance and that's very important and we will see why later. We could also see the amount of current that the plate could withstand. And that's it, this is all that we receive inside of the box of this spot welder. Ok, now let's analyze the spot welding station. First of all, the entire case is made out of metal. It weighs around 5 kilograms. On the back we only have the power cable and this plastic cap for the fuse. So if you have to change the fuse, just remove this cap and insert the new one. Ok, so let's turn the case on the front part. And the first thing we will talk about are these two connectors that will do the actual job of spot soldering. We have to add two of these copper tips and screw them in place here using the allen key. Make sure that the tips are on the same level. Now as you can see if I push this connector upwards, we will hear a click. And that's when the electric discharge will take place. But here on the side we have the input for the pedal control. So I will plug the pedal on this socket. Now instead of pushing the connector upwards, all we have to do is to press the pedal. And that will do the same, activate the poles on these two electrodes here. We will see that later. On the top part we have the power knob in order to select the amount of current that will be applied. Now this goes from 1 to 8, but these are not amperes, this is just a level indicator. The station could deliver up to 500 amperes DC. Ok, so on the left we have 3 push buttons. These are used to select the pulse mode, where we could deliver 4, 6 or 8 discharges pulses in a row. On the right side we have the on and off switch for the spot welder, but also for the soldering iron. Which by the way, here we have a plug for the iron and also the temperature knob in order to set a certain value. On the right button corner we have the output for the extension tool in case you want to solder something aside of the station case. Ok, let's power it up and see what it can do. I plug the power cable and first I turn on the welding switch, which is the green one. First thing that I see are some LEDs below the connectors so we could see where we make the contact while soldering and that's pretty nice. When you press the pulse buttons they turn red. You could select a burst of 4, 6 or 8 pulses, but you could also combine the values and get up to 18 pulses in a row if you want. 
Ok, now let's do a small test. I set the part to 5 and I grab a piece of steel and another one of poor nickel that you receive with a kit. I put them on top of each other, I place them under the copper contacts and push upwards. There was a small spark, but the two sheets are not soldered together, because I can separate them with my fingers. First, let me explain you how this type of soldering works. It is based on the resistance level of the material. The DC spot welder stores the energy inside of a capacitor, or in this case uses a transformer to release a huge energy all at once, very fast. If we have two sheets of conductive material, and we have two electrodes, one on each side, a current will pass from one electrode to the other, and the huge energy will heat and melt the materials and join them together. But in our case, both electrodes are on the same side. And we also know that the current will always follow the least resistive path. So if the metal below has a lower resistance, current will prefer passing through both materials, follow the bottom metal line, and go back to the second probe and by that melt the metals and join them together. This method requires more energy and the bigger is the resistance difference between the metals, the better. Ok, so I increase the power a bit. And now the spark is bigger and the sheets are soldered together. I also select 4 pulses with the same power. And now the parts are really soldered together. So you should try different variation of these metal sheets, different values of power and different amount of pulses and write down which one works better on each case. Ok guys, so now I plug the foot pedal. If the foot pedal is connected, the internal switch won't work anymore. Now the switch is the pedal, so in this way you can make sure the position where you want to solder is ok and then press the pedal. By pushing the electrodes upwards, you could slide and make a wrong solder joint. Ok, so I put a nickel sheet over the battery. I select the power and now I press the pedal. And there you go, now the metal connection is soldered to the battery. Be careful and don't put too much power at the first time or this might happen. The weld might pass the battery cover and make a hole in it. Be very careful with that. So when you solder there are 4 variables to have in mind. First the power applied, so the amount of current. Then you have the amount of pulses, the resistance and also the pressure that you make against the electrodes. On top of the station we have this dial, used to adjust the pressure made by the electrodes. Rotate this and make the pressure higher or lower. Now I connect the extension electrodes and make a few tests as well. I've noticed that for some reason, at the same power selected, the power applied with these electrodes is lower and I don't know why. Maybe there are some losses on these cables. The direct contact is much more powerful. As for the soldering iron, well it's a T12 tip with variable temperature. The actual iron is kind of crappy and made out of cheap plastic, but for the price of the unit that was expected. But in overall it works very well, so if you don't have a soldering station, well this one includes that too. Ok, so now I cut a piece of nickel strip and fit the batteries on the support. I place the strip over the batteries and put a spot welder on top. I press the pedal and there you go, I now have 5 batteries in series. I solder some wire to each one and then I solder a battery connector. And there you have it, I've made myself a 5S battery. So that's it with this spot welder from Sanko. In overall, well it does what it's expected to do. I've made a few more tests and I was able to solder over steel, nickel and also aluminum but not very strong. The extension electrodes are lowering a bit the power, but it's a nice thing to have them. You could also separate the electrodes and use each electrode in one hand, or maybe put one on one side of the part and the other one to the other side. I like the LEDs over the soldering area, I like that it also has a soldering iron and it is quite powerful. The only thing I don't like is the plastic parts, because they are quite low cost, but for the price of the unit, well, that's what you get. I've also made a tear down, but there is nothing special inside. Just the electrodes mechanism, a huge transformer and the main board to control the power, the pulses and the soldering iron. I hope that you made a general idea of the Suncone 1798 spot welder. You have the links below if you want to buy it. If you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep this kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.